Uh, Chairman elections, members of the Central Committee present, members of the National Management Committee present, our dear colleagues from uh, various media houses who have joined us today, um, citizens, fellow citizens who are watching us uh, on various uh, platforms this morning. To you all, I say good morning and welcome to this uh, special press briefing uh, to be addressed uh, by the General Secretary and his team here at the high table. General Secretary, allow me to proceed and invite our Chairman uh, Elections, Committee Chairman Mwenda, to address the media. Thank you very much, our Evo Media Director, Comrade Brian uh, Hapunda. Gentlemen, allow me to recognize the presence of our General Secretary, Comrade uh, Dr. Cosmas Musumari. Allow me to recognize the presence of the Deputy General Secretary in charge of politics, Comrade Antonio Manza. Allow me also to recognize all senior members of the party that are present here. Allow me also to recognize our colleagues from different media houses. We know you're working under different and difficult situations under the UPND government. So I want to thank you for being present today. We know many a times you are called at a short notice. So we thank you. It is important that we have gathered this morning as a party would want to give a post-mortem of what transpired and areas of concern in Kyle Ward by election, which was in Mufuli, which was in Mwansabombwe district, Mwansabombwe constituency where the Socialist Party came out as number two. It is important that regular elections are held all the time once they are called upon, because regular elections are the cornerstone of democracy. Regular elections are the essence Regular elections are the bedrock of democracy. So if we are going to talk about democracy, we need these regular elections all the time. It is for this reason that Zambians in 1991 chose multi-party democracy as opposed to one-party state governance. We know that the UPND would try to kill democracy, but we know that the Zambian people will not accept and agree. We've had so many powerful political parties before UPND that tried to kill democracy, and they all failed and we know what happened and how they are surviving today. The UPND may appear to be winning by elections today. The UPND may be enjoying victories today, but we know that their victories are short-lived because the time for reckoning is coming and is coming very soon. It is unfortunate what happened in Kyle Ward, in Mwansabombwe constituency, Mwansabombwe district in Wakula province. The election was stolen for the good people of Kyle Ward. The election was stolen by the UPND. We know when President Hakaike Hichilema talked about the Mingala, others 
thought that the president was joking. Mingalato is real on the ground. In Kayawad by election, there was a lot of corruption. What do I mean? A lot of ministers were using government vehicles, government funds to corrupt the people, the good people of Kayawad. The by-election in Kayawad was marred with violence. Many a times, the UPND cadres attacked the Socialist Party camps. We survived because of the support of the good people of Kayawad. I want to inform the nation, ladies and gentlemen, Kayawad is one of the smallest wards that we have in this country. Kayawad is just about two or three kilometers this side and all other sides. It's a very, very small ward. We had five ministers in Kayawad. We had Minister of Mines, Paul Kabuswe. We had uh, Minister of Sports, Elvis Nkandu. We had Minister of Energy, Peter Kapala. We had the Minister of Small and Medium Enterprise, Elias Mubank. We also had the Provincial Minister of Wapula, Mr. Njavwa Simuto, all to ensure that they influence the voting pattern by the vote and ensure that they carry the day. The list did not end there. The list did not end there. We had Mwense District Commissioner, we had Mansa District Commissioner, we had Mansa Sanfia District Commissioner, Mcherenge District Commissioner, Mwansawongwe District Commissioner, and Milengi District Commissioner. The list did not end there for the officials of President Hagaine Hichilema, who talks about hostility measures. We had directors from Ministry of Sports. In one single word, we had several government vehicles. They tried the usual style of removing the number plates, faking them, and later putting them on. It was very, very unfortunate. The good people of Kaiwad were swayed in order for the UPND to carry the day. This is what happened in Kaiwad. As a party, we thought it is wise to share with you, our good friends from the media fraternity, of what we experienced as a party. Would want to appeal to the ECZ the Electoral Commission of Zambia is a referee. They must ensure that the playing field is leveled. They must ensure that they help democracy to strive, democracy to survive in this country. But because Socialist Party believes in saving the good people of this country. And the only way we can save the good people of this country is by ensuring that we have state power. Once we have state power, we'll be able to save the people of Zambia. And how are we going to have this state power? It is by engaging in by-elections once they are created, because these are artificial by elections, which the UPND is trying to register presence in all parts of this country. It is for the reason and the importance of getting involved in by elections that the Socialist Party will continue to participate 
in these elections. It is my opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to inform the nation that despite all these maneuvers by President Harende Hichilema and his cabinet ministers, despite the vote buying, who continue to participate in these violations. Socialist Party is participating in Ibuntungwa Ward, in Kankoyo constituency, in Mfulira district on the Copper Belt, where we have our candidate, Comrade Andrew Zulu. We are also participating in Milengi, in a ward called Mumbo Tuta Ward, and our candidate is Paul Mamwe. We are participating in Kanchiria district, Kanchiria constituency, in Mansha ward, where our candidate is comrade Emmanuel Katongo. These are some of the by-elections that are ongoing, and a socialist party, we are not going to be a party that will appear on the ballot paper only in 2026 because our desire is genuine to save the people of Zambia. Allow me now to call upon the media director to do what he knows best. I thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade uh, Charmo Wenda. I now call upon our uh, Deputy Secretary General Political for the uh, Antonio Mazza address. And there are a serious strain on the treasure of the country. Zambia, where we are today, we are a broke nation with people failing to meet their daily needs. And yet we have a government that spends huge sums of money on self-made by elections where they are buying off some councillors to resign, they're encouraging some councillors to resign and give them some employment and, and other forms of inducement, just to create violations, with the view of trying to maintain a fake impression that as a political party, the UPND are gaining ground. That's number one. Number two, they are doing this with a view of keeping the opposition political parties busy with the violations. Because they know that violations are costly. We are spending a lot of money to participate in these violations. And they are also time consuming. The UPND is not spending any money. They are using taxpayers' money. They are using government vehicles. They are using government facilities. They are using government officials who by law are not allowed to participate in elections. So they are spending zero. And they know that we are spending a lot of money and they are trying to bankrupt opposition political parties with these unnecessary violations. Just like they try to bankrupt opposition political parties with unnecessary arrests 
on trumped up charges and they keep us busy at the courts, busy paying the lawyers, and busy at the courts at the time that we're supposed to be out in the field mobilizing our parties. Number three, they are making these by-elections because they want to create an impression that as a political party they are strong and that they are entering into territories where they didn't have the support. If you look at what is going on in terms of the by-elections, these by-elections are not taking place in the traditional strongholds of the European Union, unless there's a death. There's no by-elections going on in Western province. There are no by-elections going on in Southern province. There are no by-elections going on in the Western province. The by-elections are only in places where European did perform badly in 2021. And they are trying to create anyone's there. And like my colleague has said, these by-elections are not a true measure of the popularity of the European Union. We are concerned as a socialist party with the credibility and the capacity of the Electoral Commission of Zambia to hold free, fair, and credible elections. As a socialist party, we have put it on record that we don't have faith in the Electoral Commission of Zambia that they are in a position to hold free and fair and credible elections, owing to the following things. Number one, the composition of the Electoral Commission itself. We as Socialist Party have written to the ECZ to complain against the appointment of Mr. Brown Casaro as the Chief Electoral Officer of the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Because we believe that he doesn't have the credibility to hold that office. Mr. Brown Casaro was relieved of his duties at the Electoral Commission of Zambia when he served as Director for Information and Technology. The Commission has not told us why they relieved him of his duties in the first place. And they have not told us why they have brought him back after relieving him of his duties as Director of Commission and Technology. We believe that the person who was once fired by the Electoral Commission of Zambia does not deserve to hold a senior position as that of the Chief Electoral Officer of the Electoral Commission of Zambia. We have no faith, we have no trust, we have no confidence in the credibility of Mr. Brown Casano to execute his mandate in a free, fair, and impartial manner. Number two, if you look at the composition of the commission itself, you have non-UPND sympathizers. Non-UPND sympathizers are holding positions as the Electoral of Zambia commissioners. A body that must be above board a body that must be held by people who have no any political inclination. Comrade McDonald Jibbens is a known UPND sympathizer who at times has tried to stand on UPND tickets. How on earth can a non UPND sympathizer be given an opportunity to serve at the Electoral Commission of Zambia as a commissioner of the Electoral Commission of Zambia? A very sensitive institution of government that holds elections of the nation. The chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Zambia, Roman Zalomis, is a non upnd sympathizer. How can you have non upnd sympathizers running the Electoral Commission of Zambia and expect to have free and fair and credible elections? It's not possible. So if you look at the composition of the Electoral Commission of Zambia, we have no faith that ECZ in its current form can deliver a free and fair election, not only the by-elections, but also in 2026. We are also concerned as a political party that the Electoral Commission of Zambia has failed to live by the tenets of the Constitution that caused the Electoral Commission of Zambia to be independent, to be autonomous, and to carry out their mandate without the influence of political power. The Electoral Commission of Zambia is guided by the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia. It is guided by the Electoral Code of, the, by the electoral code of Conduct. It is also guided by the Electoral Process Act, number 35 of 2016. The things that are going on in the by-elections, 
where government is using state apparatus, government vehicles, government facilities, including government officials to run elections, must not be allowed. The Electoral Commission of Zambia has the mandate under the Constitution. It has the mandate under the Electoral Process Act. It has got the mandate under the electoral laws to act and disqualify UPND for abuse of state resources. When we go to file in these nominations, the chief electoral officer and the chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Zambia herself, Honorable Manda Azalonis, has always participated in the filing in processes. She sees firsthand the abuse of state apparatus by the UPN. She doesn't act. How then can we believe that a commission that is failing to act on simple by elections will be able to enforce the electoral laws in 2026 when we have a general conference, a general election? So we don't have that faith that they can, in their form and composition, deliver a free, fair, and credible election. We therefore call upon all well-meaning Zambians to continue putting pressure on the Electoral Commission of Zambia to act according to the Constitution of Zambia, according to the Electoral Process Act, and according to the Electoral Code of Conduct. Elections are emotive. The behavior of the police, particularly the Inspector General of Police, who has unilaterally stood up and said you will not allow any political party in opposition to hold the rallies, to hold processions, is against the constitution of the Republic of Zambia. And the Electoral Commission of Zambia has the mandate to condemn that, and they are not condemning. They are doing better. The behavior of the police must be condemned by the Electoral Commission of Zambia. They are mandated by law to do that, and they are not doing anything. The behavior of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, where the Permanent Secretary, Comrade Tabo Kawani, has gone on media to warn you media houses to stop hosting us, who have different views from that of the UPNB, is a violation, not only of our democratic right, but also is a violation of the Electoral Process Act. Because the media, must be allowed to cover all political parties, irrespective of their status. Because we all use the media to campaign. We all use the media to communicate. That is a violation of the Electoral Process Act. And we expected the Electoral Commission of Zambia to act on that. They have not acted. The Electoral Commission of Zambia are working as an appendage of the UPN. The Electoral Commission of Zambia in its current form is an extension of the UPND. The Electoral Commission of Zambia in its current form must be changed and be called the UPND Commission of Zambia. Because it is not impartial, it is not independent, it's not autonomous, and it is not conducting itself in a professional manner. And this must be condemned, this must be changed, and this must be fought. We want to have a clean slate, free, fair, credible elections, where you lose because your message was not resonating with the voters, or you lose because you didn't do your homework. Not because you lose because the Electoral Commission of Zambia was not doing their homework. In the past, the Electoral Commission of Zambia used to be all encompassing. They used to be very inclusive. This Electoral Commission of Zambia is not inclusive. We used to sit and agree on key issues before they are implemented. They are not doing that. A socialist party were written to the ECZ. In the last election, we wrote to the ECZ giving them names of UPND cadres that the ECZ had employed to masquerade as election agents, as election officers in mass amount. The response from the electoral commission was that nothing. They admitted to knowing two of those UPND cadres on the list and claimed ignorance of the other two on the list. But they did not come out and say, we, these are not UPND cadres. They failed to refuse that those were not UPND cadres. 
They didn't deny it. Now those are not European leaders. They say we cannot change the names of these people because we have run out of time. Your complaint has come on the level to have. They did not deny that those were European leaders. And we will give the media the letter that they responded to us so that you see for yourselves that the Electoral Commission of Zambia, when we confronted them, that they had put non european cadres to masquerade as election agents for ECZ, the Electoral Commission of Zambia could not deny that those were not european cadres. Instead, they said, your complaint has come very late. Think of that. Your complaint has come very late. Not that these are not cadres, no, but that your complaint has come very late, so we cannot act on it. How do we have faith in such an electoral commission of Zambia to deliver a free, fair, and fair election? We want to appeal and make the following demands. One, that the electoral commission of Zambia must abide by the Constitution, the Electoral Process Act, and the Electoral Code of Conduct. Number two, that the electoral commission of Zambia must enforce the proposals that came from the church, the political parties, and the European Union. In the report of the European Union for 2021, in the analysis of the 2021 general elections. And also the reports that we made as political parties to the Electoral Commission of Zambia. As well as the report that was made to the Electoral Commission of Zambia by the church. We want to see those reforms. If we don't see the reforms, we will not have free and fair elections in 2021. The reforms call for the total repeal of the Public Order Act. It must be repealed. The reforms call for access to information. You media houses, you heard that there's a law on access to information. Have you seen it? Has it been actualized? This government has failed even to come up with a form which you need to use to launch your government. And if you look at the access to information law, it is not access to information law. It's extremely prohibitive because again it has maintained the authority to give you information. It has been maintained and given to the politicians. So in one way they're telling you we have given you an access to information law that we all have to use as political players, that all of us have to use as Zambians to access the truth of how government is operating. On the other hand, they have made the law prohibitive. You cannot even access that information. So we call upon the Electoral Commission of Zambia to enforce the reforms that have come from the European Union, the church mother bodies, the electoral practitioners and the, those that have participated in elections such as political parties. From the 2021 general elections, those reforms must be implemented. Without implementing those reforms, we will go into 2026 with the compromised Electoral Commission of Zambia as it is with an Electoral Commission of Zambia that has no capacity to implement the law, with the Electoral Commission of Zambia that has no capacity to censor the police, to censure the media in terms of the public media, ZNPC, Daily, Mail, and Times of Zambia, to where all of us are paying tax, to cover all of us, cover all of us adequately, fairly, and to go into 2026 with the same problems. We will not deliver a free, fair, and credible nation. I thank you, Honorable Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade uh, Antonio, our Deputy uh, General Secretary in charge of politics. So it is my real privilege and honor to call upon the General Secretary, Comrade Dr. Kostas Mali, to address the meeting. Yes, sir. Again, uh, Greetings to media houses that are with us today. My comrades have gone through a number of things. And the question that most Zambians that are listening to this or watching this particular press briefing should be asking themselves is then what is the meaning, what is the sense behind all these violations? So if these by-elections are corrupt, they are violent, these by-elections are self-saving for the UPND, what are we doing in them? 
Are these by elections meant to make Zambians look stupid? Are they meant to ensure that the opposition political parties are marginalized? I think we can't run away from those questions. Every Zambian who is out there, please ask yourself these questions. Here's the government that is using your money. They are calling for by-elections that are unnecessary. They are corrupting people. They should step down so that there can be a by-election. Simply because they want to make a point. They want to show strength. They want to send a signal that they are also strong in areas that they were not strong. But what has this got to do with democracy? What has this got to do with the reality, with the problems the Zambians are facing today? So you are engineering by elections, you are deflecting from the real problems of the people. If you ask it, the majority of Zambians today, they will tell you that their number one issue is hunger. That's the number one issue. People are not able to afford food in the right quantities, the right quality. That's the number one issue in Zambia today. And that's where the effort, the resources should be channeled. But when you're a government that is failing to deliver developmental issues, and instead, they want to show that they are strong, and they do that through by-elections. It simply means that their priorities are not towards the masses. The masses are pawns, the masses are scapegoats, the masses are the ladders on which they climb and then throw away, immediately they get into power. They are not sympathetic to the needs, to the uh, demands of the people. That's why they do that. It's a cruel system that we live in. And Zambians have to come to terms with that. You are dealing with some of the most unsympathetic people, politicians in the world. You are dealing with a bunch of politicians that is very greedy. One that is not considering you as human beings. Although, ultimately, you are the one that had power. You are the one that vote for these people. You put them into power and they turn against you. What is the by election? The government is spending not less than five, six, at times 10 million quarter, or even more than that, on each by election. And your next question is, where are they spending? If this is a very small one that we are talking about, how are they spending? Why do you think in this small by-election you would have five ministers? You would have countless number of permanent secretaries, directors, DCs, and many other government employees. There's a way they steal money, and they waste your resources. It's called subsistence allowance. It's called sitting allowance. And when you are out of your station, they are out of Osaka, what they are given is basically the average salary of the average Zambian per day, per night. So you have a minister called Elvis in I don't know what job he does as a minister. But he is in each and every by election in the northern part of this country. And he's not going there for one day. He's going to go there, literally camp, and then he's going to shift from one by election to the other. At the end of the month, Elvis Sinkando is getting 10, 20 times more from you, the Zambian people. Although you are giving him a salary, but he's stealing from you through these by-elections. And with him are hundreds and hundreds of others that follow suit. So they're stealing your money.
They are not doing it for free. They are not doing it even for the love of their political party. They are doing it for money. It's your money they are stealing day in, day out. And you think with that system of stealing, by elections are going to stop? They are not going to stop. The UPN officials themselves know that whenever there's a by election, it's time to chew. And they will do their best to cause the by election. They will solicit for by-elections because they know when by-elections come, they are swimming in millions. And it's them swimming in millions, not the masses of our people. So we are dealing with a very corrupt system involving a bunch of politicians, a bunch of civil servants that are using your money, the money that you don't have, you are starving, you don't have health care, you don't have proper infrastructure, but your money is being wasted that way. They are using your assets, your public assets. They are not driving the cheapest vehicles, they are driving V6 and all these vehicles that have got big engines. The fuel consumption is very high. A single vehicle, five days, in that terrain, will wall of your 30 foot southern flash. And these government vehicles that are supposed to be deployed on governmental duties, today they are part and parcel of the looting that is going on in this country. As if that is not enough. They are going there, using the hunger of the masses to ensure that when a by-election is caused, they also give small handouts to the masses of our people that are starving. In some cases, they lined up people and gave them 50 kwacha, 100 kwacha to vote for them. In other cases, they have gone to 300 kwacha. And we have cases where they even paid 1,000 kwacha per person that was willing to go and work for them. So you cause hunger by your poor and quote of policies. You cause hunger and unemployment by your poor economic policies. And then you use by elections on people that are hungry, that are poor, and you give them even a 50 quarter. These are people that are compromised. And the people know it. Our chairperson for elections talked of us participating just now in four by elections that are ongoing. And that drama has not stopped, it's ongoing. Money is exchanging hands. Government assets are being abused. This morning, in the Kachiria, in Mashawad, the UPND officials are running around from one village headman to the other, writing down the names of people, taking their analysis, and they're promising them maize or new men. That's what they're promising them. We have told our people that side, please record and take videos. And the process has begun. We have evidence of what they've been saying since last night. We have alerted our people. We have told the masses, in as much as you are starving, in as much as you are taking the maids and women that they're giving you, take pictures <coughs> and record the conversations you are having with these people. And they have started and we are receiving this information. And that is evil enough, but where they know they are going to lose, where they think we have got a strong candidate, they would rather corrupt that candidate. So in Kachiria again, in Masha, what 
the UPND using one of their district officials, a man of, sorry, uh, the name is Elder Charles Kashiwa. He has been tasked to buy our candidate, that's Emmanuel Katongo Chisaka. This is a young man of 27 years old. He doesn't have much in terms of means to support his family. The UPND are not interested in him. They didn't even know him that well. A few days ago, they came to him and said, step down and we'll give you 70,000 watt. 70,000 watt. This 70,000 watt is not coming from the pocket of HH. The 70,000 watt is public resources, public money. And because they know our councillor candidate is strong on the ground, they are back to what they know, corruption, intimidation. So this young man reported to us and said, this is what they are doing. We have conversations for what has been going on. Now, because he is resisting, they are going to go to his family. They are literally threatening his family. They are saying Emmanuel should step down. And then again, Zambians and all those that are watching, you ask yourself, what's the sense in all this? The sense in all this is that Emmanuel has to lose so that they can celebrate victory so that they can go ahead causing more by-elections. Because if the Socialist Party and its candidates starts winning, the incentive is taken away. It's not fun anymore. They can't justify the millions that they are stealing if those results are not forthcoming. So those results have to keep on flowing to justify the call for more and more by-elections. It's a vicious cycle. So we are fortunate enough to have a principled young man who is saying, poor as I am, but keep your 70,000 watt, keep your jobs. But how many councillor candidates have stepped down because of hunger, because of poverty, and they opened up a way for a quick victory for the UPND? That's the majority. In a decent society, this would be classified as a crime. In a decent society, the ministers, the UPN officials involved would be sacked. In a decent society, the DC in Kanchibia now, who is arranging for the distribution of maize and meal meal, would lose his job immediately. In a decent society, the ECZ officials would resign today. In a decent society, HH and the UPND government would step down. They have failed the Zambians, they are destroying democracy, and if you look at it strictly, they are insulting the credibility, the intelligence of Zambians. And to the UPND friends and relatives, Zambians are, if you measure it on African standards, relatively passive people, peace-loving people. But don't take them for granted. Don't take Zambians for granted. They are watching, they are observing, they don't say much, 
but then he is going to be there in 2026. When they turn out in good numbers, and they will still remain quiet, you will get a shock of your lives. You will try to read, you try to do all these machinations that you have become accustomed to, you will fail. And your ending is not going to be a good one. You are creating a culture, a culture where it's almost a joke to talk about democracy in Zambia. You are creating a culture where elections are a literary joke and a waste of people's time. That's what you are doing. Your children, your grandchildren will remember you for this. And all those people that are participating today, what you are calling enjoying, chewing, and politics is very short-lived. You are destroying the social fabric of this country. You are not leaders. You are facts. You are not leaders. You are destroying society. You are not leaders. You are betraying the people that voted for you. As a socialist party, we will not be intimidated. We will stand firm. We will participate with the aim of exposing all these malpractices. We are working with the voters, with the people, to ensure everything you do from today onwards is recorded, is documented. And we hold out this against you. We have already sent notes to the police that we will not shy away from doing citizens' arrest. If we find and can prove that this is a government asset, we will confiscate it. So all of you who are going to these by-elections with the government vehicles, be warned. Palace State House that are going in the by-elections with the Palace State House assets, be warned. Those vehicles will not come back. We are going to arrest them. Enough is enough. You can fool people most of the time, but there will be a time that people say, we are not taking this anymore. And that time is coming, that time has come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, the General Secretary Comrade Kospas Musumari, for taking time to interact with the media and interface with uh, the citizens out there on very pertinent issues affecting us all. Thank you very much, uh, General Secretary. My colleagues from the media, we have come to the end of uh, the press briefing.